Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about braking. Setting up your brakes, bleeding them through, and getting that personal preference that you want, or that I want. Let's do what I want. First things first, you're gonna need a checklist of things. A coffee, a bleed kit, seven mil spanner, 2.5 mil Allen key, hydraulic brake fluid, brake cleaner, loads of roll. Finally, number eight, protective gloves. Now, if you're like me, you won't want those brake levers to come flying all the way into the bars when you pull the brakes. My personal preference on brakes is limited movement on the lever, maximum power once I pull that in. I don't wanna be squeezing it all the way to the bars. On my Switch 6, pulling the lever, it's coming nearly to the bars. So that tells me this is ready for a bleed, so we're gonna bleed it through, and then we're gonna do my secret little maneuver to make sure that those levers only go limited movement, a couple of mil. Let's get to work. So first things first, we've got to make sure we keep safe. Stick some gloves on your hands. Main reason for that is you do not want that hydraulic fluid touching your skin. It's really nasty stuff. And no matter how big and tough you are, it ain't good for your skin. 2.5 mil Allen key. What we're going to do first is remove the top cap on the top of the brake. Now you need to be really careful when you take this off that the rubber washer that sits on that stays on there and doesn't stay in the bike or even worse than that, fall on the floor and you lose it. Pop that to one side, we'll be needing that later. Right, straight to the kit. What have we got in here? Let's get rid of a few of these things that are in the way. Not the coffee, coffee's not in the way. In the kit, you're gonna find one of these strange cup looking things. Release the little probe thing, pop that to one side and screw it straight into the top of here it fits nicely on and do that up nice and snug. Now there's so many different ways of bleeding brakes. This is my way of doing it. I'm not saying it's the right way. It's definitely not the way that they tell you to do it in the manual. I leave everything in, leave the wheel in, leave the brake pads in, leave it as it is, okay? I'm not taking any of it off. Take some of your roll, fold it in half and pop a little hole in the middle, ever so small, just like that, tiny little hole. Now what I'm gonna do is pop that straight over the top once I've taken the cap off. So remove the little rubber cap, pop that to one side. Now I'm just gonna pop this straight over there and as you can see, exposing our little screw that we need to get to. Tuck that in, nice and snug, just like that, simple. What you need now is a seven mil wrench and the best thing about this is if you've got one that's angled, angle it down so it just sits on there. So you can just find its nice little snug place and that will stay there you need your syringe and your hydraulic brake fluid. Now, like I say, this stuff is really nasty, so don't get it on your skin, and if whatever you do, just don't put it in your eyes or drink it or anything weird like that. Take a full syringe load, pop that straight on top, and try desperately not to have any of this drip into the bike. Open up the screw just by turning the spanner just a little bit, and as you can see, we can get, we're getting a couple of bubbles already. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait for these bubbles so just come up to here. We wanna get rid of those. I don't wanna be pumping bubbles through the system. There they go. Give it a little shake if you like. Whatever you do, make sure that that syringe stays on the nipple and that it doesn't come off. Because if it does, remember, we've got brake pads in there, disc, everything. We don't wanna spoil all of that. Another bubble, let that go. Shaky, shaky. And what you can do if it traps there, you can actually pull the syringe up and that'll encourage the air to obviously follow its natural path and go up to the top, like so. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compress this whilst watching that cup on the top end. So holding it nice and in place, compress it down. I can see it coming into the cup at the top. So that means we are bleeding, that's good. And it's real dark, nasty colored fluid at the top. Keep going until the cup looks like it's nearly full. I would say about there. If you look carefully, the color of the fluid changes. So it goes from a real black, dark color to the natural red that is here, which means we've taken out all the nasty stuff and we're now filling it with the good stuff. Okay, once we got to a good point there, we're gonna shut everything off. So turn that wrench that way, leave that just like that. Nice and simple, I'm not touching it. Gonna go to the front of the bike, gonna pop the probe back in, compress that down nice and hard. And now just undo this cup, and there we go. Some really nasty looking dark fluid, very hard to show you on camera. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dispose of that sensibly outside. All done, right. 
Back to the two and a half mil Allen key with the bolt on the end, as you remember. And ever so gently, try not to knock the bike because you don't want that flying off. So we're just gonna pop this back in, nice and firm. So we're closed at the top end of the bike now. This is the bit that I do. So this is for my personal preference. Again, this isn't the way to do it. This isn't the correct way, but it's the way I've done it for years. I do it on all of my bikes. It works every time. As the system is all closed, this is all firm. I'm gonna pull the lever and just have a feel. And you see that, it just comes so far back into the bars. That's not what I want. I want to be able to just touch those levers and engage full power. So what I'm gonna do is open the system from this end and I'm gonna over pressurize it. So I'm gonna force more fluid into the system than what's supposed to be there. And obviously what that's gonna do is push those pistons on the caliper closer to the disc, meaning that there's more pressure in the system so that when I pull that lever, it's got less distance to travel. So let's try that. So open up on the wrench, just gonna push down and you can feel that it goes with some resistance because it doesn't really wanna go. That'll do, close it off. So again, we've got a closed system now. Give it a test. And this is the, uh, there we go. See, that lever is not coming in at all now. So I've gone too much. That's a real good situation when that happens because now all I have to do is undo the wrench. As I undo it, there's so much pressure in there, it will force it back into the syringe. I won't have to do anything and then I just shut it off. So let's try that. Undo, forces back into the syringe, close off. Now. I'm gonna make an estimation that it's perfect. I was wrong, it's still too much pressure. Okay, if that happens, all you gotta do, do the same again. Undo it, and you can even just pull on the syringe a little bit if you want, but I don't. Count to three, four seconds, close it off, and that is perfect. As you can see, the movement, I'm getting about 10, 12 mil of movement on my lever, and then it's gonna be engaging full power. And that is the best way of pressurizing these Shimano Saint systems with no mess, real easy, and with a limited amount of tools. Now, this is the arty bit. What we've got to do is we've got to take the syringe off and we do not want it to drip or leak into the brake. And that's why we've got obviously this rag in there. So I'm gonna take it off very carefully and sprint to the exit. Clean, I've done that before. Now what we need to do, take the wrench off. Now remember, there's still brake fluid there. I can see a big bubble of it. So what I'm gonna do is really carefully use the rag to just clean it like that as you take it off. It's as simple as that. And then go over it very thoroughly. We don't want any of those drips going into those brake pads. Obviously they would spoil the brake pads and ruin them. And then you'd have to start all over again whilst cleaning it. So that'll do. I've got brake fluid on me, so I'm just gonna clean it off chuck that one let's take a fresh one same again just fold it in half pop a little hole in it go straight over because it's that nipple on the end of the caliper that's still got brake fluid in it take your brake cleaner give it a little spray straight down the nozzle and again just wiping it as we go that brake now oh no sponginess at all it just engages full power just like that. So that's my way of doing it. Like I say, this is not by the book. This is not the way that the manufacturers tell you to do it, but this is the way that I've been taught and I've been doing it for a long time now, probably too long, I'm showing my age. I'm not gonna say how many years. And it works every time for me. So I'm gonna do that on all the bikes today. I'm gonna get all of the bikes set up because they could all do with a bit of a bleed. Um, but I just wanted to share with you guys and show you what I do, how I do it. I really hope that helps you guys. Let me know how you get on. If you wanna try it and you want some extra advice, hit me up in the comments. I'll get back to you. I'll let you know what, uh, what other little tips I've got up my sleeves, even when I'm wearing a t-shirt. Good luck. Don't be afraid to give it a go. Just make sure that you've got the safety precautions in place and you know, you can't ever be too safe. So if you want to stick on a pair of goggles or glasses to protect your eyes, you probably should do that as well. I am a mountain biker. I am not a mechanic, but this is my way of setting up my bike. And this is my tips for you guys. Stay safe out on the trails. Good luck setting up your bike. Let me know what you want to know next. If there's any other little tips or tricks I can tell you about on my bike, let me know what you want to hear. Put it in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for the support. I'll see you on the next one.